uh, either listening uh, live or uh, watching us during the week. Uh, we pray that God will bless us all this morning. Uh, we're going to start by singing our Tez song, Bless the Lord, O My Soul. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And We're going to sing our two songs now. The first is, Come, now is the time to worship. And then the second, Sing to the Lord with all of your heart. And if you're able, please stand.
because I hadn't written it down on this thing in front of me, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Paul, and uh, Norma is going to be preaching to us shortly. Um, we're still in John chapter 6, uh, looking at Jesus being the living bread, uh, the bread that's come down from heaven. And Norma's going to be uh, ex exploring that again with us uh, later. So let's spend a few moments now looking back at the past week. We bring to God those things this week which have blessed us and enriched us. Those things that have encouraged us and we offer them to God as an offering of worship. So just spend a moment reflecting on the week and those things that have uh, been good and that you've enjoyed and been encouraged by. But then I expect there have also been things this week which have not been so good. So let's spend a moment reflecting on, on that, reflecting on what's been uh, not so good this past week that we'd like to say sorry to God for. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mara's going to come and read for us. First lesson is from Joshua. Chapter 24. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. Now, fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your ancestors that they worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors, who served them beyond the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites, 
who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. And the second reading is from Ephesians. The armour of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the, all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given to me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an, an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare in fearlessness as I should. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't know, is it not? I think that's better, isn't it? Sorry. So before Norma comes to speak to us, we're going to sing another song. Light of the world, you stepped down into darkness and please stand.
Hear the word of our Lord, according to John. Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whosoever feeds on this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and always acceptable to you. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. It's wonderful that we've had so many marvellous hymns, hymns of praise, hymns of worship, real worship, played to us this morning and the ability to sing them with joy. Thank you. Have you ever looked at a house and then gone inside and said, it seems bigger on the inside than it did outside? This, of course, is an optical illusion, sometimes caused by the way the room's furnished or decorated. The very first edition of Doctor Who brought to our visual senses the idea of something being bigger on the inside than the outside. That big blue police box, which was once part of many streetscapes, held whole worlds inside for Doctor Who fans, of which I wasn't one. <laughs> but even in our own homes, a humble kitchen jug, you can look at and think, it's not big enough for what I want, and then finds it contains twice as much. John was the theologian of all the writers of the Gospels. The others recorded everything faithfully, but John went deeper. And the whole of this chapter six is him going deeper into what Jesus said about his bread and his wine, his body and his blood. And that's what Jesus is offering the bigger on the inside than the outside. Beyond bread that goes stale, he's offering himself, which will take us beyond the mundane and the ordinary, to a vision of God that is a God who extends beyond the limitations of the here and now. And this week's gospel reading opens with that now familiar phrase, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Well, the idea of eating flesh sounded like cannibalism to some. and Drinking blood was an anathema to the Jews. Even kosher meat today has to be bled and bloodless before it's eaten. When Jesus claimed equality with God, and then question their belief in him, they'd had enough. It was too hard for them. It was quite different when 5,000 of them were getting a free lunch on the hillside. They were fixed on the here and now. They were fixed, they chased the tangible and the, uh, and the mundane. Instead of seeing that Jesus is offering a gift that is not perishable. It's beyond the mundane, into a whole new vision, beyond our imaginations. It's what writer Kate Bruce calls the more 
a God. In order to understand this, we need to grow. In C.S. Lewis's stories of Narnia, Aslan the lion represented Jesus. And when Lucy saw Aslan the second time after a year, she said, Aslan, you're bigger. He said, no child, you are. Every year that you grow, you will find me bigger. Every year that we grow, we will find God bigger. If we're stuck with the same limited idea of God that we always had, we're not growing. We need to be totally committed to grow. Spiritual growth is a collaborative effort between you and the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit works with us, not just in us. We work with him. If we don't take our growth seriously, we will miss out on so much that God has for us. The vision of God, who is beyond our imaginings, and extends beyond the limits of the here and now. People moved away from Jesus. What he said made it too hard for them. It wasn't working out as the twelve expected either. They saw the crowds melting away and his popularity decline. Some things he said were hard to understand, but they were sure he was the Messiah. He had a presence and a power that held them. His words had a ring of truth. He had the secret of really being alive, and they'd never met anyone like him. Is that how we meet Jesus? Is that how we see our Lord? The crowds who deserted him were happy to see his miracles and intrigued by some of his teaching, but assumed that they could choose what bits to believe. What bits to believe and tack on to a system that they already had as we read about in Joshua. They came and listened when it suited them and went back to their ordinary lives. But Jesus is not an optional extra, neither for them nor for us. God wants our commitment and without it we cannot grow. And if we cannot grow, we can't understand. How often do we pick and choose what suits us? Is this what stunts our spiritual growth? Like the crowds that dropped away, our inability to understand what God is saying to us. We need to pay attention to what Jesus says if we want to be strong. It may not have worked out as we expected the first time we called him Lord. We've seen others turn away, but we've wanted to keep following him. We've glimpsed the vision and have learnt so much as we've travelled with him. But where is the enthusiasm? The enthusiasm we once had for his word and for our discipleship. Does it sometimes feel mundane? Same old, same old. The past few weeks has put in my, as in mind of the recruiting sergeants and I, 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 I apologize not for repeating this. The recruiting sergeants who in the British Army offered the king's shilling to whoever enlisted. And the Roman army, they were offered a day's pay. On picking up that money, the man was recruited 
immediately this action was considered an oath of allegiance to serve emperor and empire. It was a sacred vow called a sacramentum, where we get the word sacrament from. A vow, a sacred oath, a sacrament, and a sacrament affects all that it signifies. Once, commit, once committed, the soldier could no longer choose what he would obey. He would be trained, trained to obey at all times in order to survive the battles. God's word teaches us to obey in order to survive our battles. We cannot keep our sacred oath our sacramentum without him. We know those who sang, Oh Jesus, I have promised at confirmation, and then drifted away, returning to the mundane. We manage to keep our sacred oath, our sacramentum, only by keeping close to the Lord. We take the sacrament where we come again and again, to Christ's love feast at his table, to be fed by him. When the Eucharist is given to someone who's dying, it's called the viaticum, which literally translated means food for the journey. When we come to his table to receive communion, we receive provisions for our journey. Every time we receive provisions for our journey. And when we come to stand here, we are publicly expressing our need and our love for God. We are conscripts in his army, not to fight, fight flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness and temptation. Two weeks ago, the reading from Ephesians told us, to be careful how we live our lives because the days are evil. This week, we're reminded to put on the whole armor of God in order to stand firm against spiritual wickedness. We come with open hands, wanting, willing to receive all that Christ can give. But we must obey. We must be aware also of allowing familiarity and repetition, robbers of the reality, the energy, the passion of what it means. It's right that we should be joyful. It's right that our worship should be joyful, that we've got to struggle to keep our hands down when we want to raise them. It's right. But sometimes it's so easy to become too happy clappy that we lose the awe and the wonder of God. If we do, we fail to find the deeper relationship in the wonder and greatness of God. The further up, the further in you go, the bigger everything gets. The inside is bigger than the outside. When other disciples were leaving and the crowds peeling away, Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to leave too? And Peter answered, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We must say to the Lord, to whom can we go? Do we want to be captivated by the greatness of God, which runs through the ordinary and opens our eyes to the extraordinary? As we pledge ourselves again to him at his table next week, the week after, the week after that, and all the weeks after that, 
let us again pledge ourselves to him. To him and his kingdom. Never being satisfied with the mundane as we stand in awe at his glory. Are you ready to renew your commitment to the Lord right now? If so, I do. And so may each one of us say, Yes, Lord, I offer my whole self to you to do what you say, to go where you send, and to give my life for your kingdom. Amen. Let's just take a moment, shall we? To reflect on what Norma has been saying to us. What she's been bringing to us from God's word. Just pause a minute and just gaze into that room which is bigger than it looks on the outside. Gaze into God who is bigger than we can ever imagine. Stand in awe of him. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Father God, we thank you for this insight that we've had this morning into how great you are. How marvellous you are. And this fresh realisation that this great, this awesome God became flesh and dwelt among us and bids us come to him. And we come now this morning and we ask indeed that you would help us to again Reaffirm our faith and our confidence in you. And that each day we might grow and each day we might see how big you are and how bigger you are than all we can ever imagine. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. Amen. So we have an opportunity now to affirm our faith, and we do that. If, you, if you're able, please stand. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe in, and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known to the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit down as we come to our prayers of intercession. Let's pray 
for the church and the world and thank God for his goodness. We pray for the church throughout the world that it may grow in holiness, outreach and numbers. We ask you to guide and direct all who preach the word and all who administer the sacraments. Empower all who you have called to be bishops, pastors and leaders. Grant them the wisdom and vision in the leading of your people. Protect all who seek to defend the faith and suffer persecution through speaking out against evil and for Christians in areas where they're oppressed, and for those who face scorn at home or at work. Be their strength and hope in times of trouble, and lighten their darkness. O oh Lord God, when your church is beset by change and controversy, may we stand firm on the sure foundation that Christ is Lord and head of the body of the church. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Holy Spirit, you brought order out of chaos. Bring order to our actions and purpose to our lives. You move in the deep places of creation, giving life into all creatures and this earth. Restrength, refresh, renew and restore your creation and all your people. Help us to nurture this planet with love and to live responsibility for the well-being of creation for this and future generations to come. We pray for places where the earth is exploited and damaged and where your creatures are abused or misused. Help us all as much as we are able to conserve and safeguard all the wonders you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, look upon this troubled world with your mercy. There's so much suffering. We pray for those affected by the flooding in Bangladesh and, Bangladesh and Nigeria, and for those who are hungry and simply just misplaced with nowhere to go. There are so many people broken by tyranny and destruction. Societies fractured by violence and suspicion. Nations torn apart by greed and hatred. Again, we pray before you, we bring before you the Middle East, the dreadful loss of lives, the injured and the exhausted people of the Gaza Strip. We pray for a just and acceptable way forward to a peace treaty. And we also pray for the Ukraine and the war-torn countries of Africa. Lord of creation of all the ends of this earth, we pray for peace in this world where Jews, Muslims and Christians and everyone can all live together in harmony. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, bless our king and country. Guide our government, both nationally and locally, that they may act with justice, honesty and integrity. We give thanks for our homes and our loved ones and friends. And we pray for a sense of joy and liberty in the communities to which we belong. Thank you, in spite of the horrendous acts in Southport, the communities have come together in peace and understanding, trying to rebuild. May we all be kind and understanding in our dealings with each other. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We bring before you all who suffer in body, mind or spirit, for those having treatment or anxiously awaiting hospital appointments, for those who feel overwhelmed or struggling and alone. For those who find their lives restricted by illness, age or other circumstances, we ask your healing love and compassion on all who are suffering. And in a moment's silence, please, may before the Lord anyone known to you personally. May your love and healing surround them all. Comfort all who mourn. Lord, in the storms of life you come to us, and we give thanks for those who have passed through this life and are at rest with you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, as we have voiced our concerns for this world, 
help us to acknowledge and be aware that despite of all the sad and evil things, there is still much good. Thank you for the good people who serve you and others through their actions, for the aid workers, those who seek to help the homeless, the food banks, those who give their time voluntary in charity shops, for carers, for the Samaritans, and those who help in different activities within the churches, all reaching out to show your light and glory in this world. And we truly believe that you have the ultimate power over everything. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your Amen. kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you, through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, having said, uh, uh, affirmed our faith, we have an opportunity to sing uh, uh, our faith, and we're going to sing together, This I Believe, Our Father Everlasting. We stand to sing. Thank you. 
You can tell that we're coming to the end of the summer holidays. The notices have started to rev up again. <laughs> yeah, all those all those weeks where we just had one or two notices, now we've got a shed full. Okay? So pin your years back. Um, Parish magazine is available, and most of the notices are in there. Next uh, Sunday, we have a communion service here. Uh, and then we have uh, a number of notices. First of all, uh, for anybody who wants to be confirmed, there's going to be a confirmation service at St. Peter's Church, uh, Frampton, uh, on the Sunday the 6th of October. Sunday the 6th of October. And Dave Jones is going to be starting some preparation classes for that uh, on the, beginning on Tuesday the 3rd of September. Uh, in St. Saviour's in Colpit Heath. And if you're interested in that, then please talk to Ian, Howell, uh, Wanda, or Joanne uh, if you're interested in confirmation um, and, uh, and or contact Pam in the office. Uh, but that's a great opportunity. It's a, it's a uh, missionary-wide confirmation service, so it'd be great uh, for, for as many as possible to be there for that. Um, on the 9th of September, Westley Village uh, breakfast is being run in conjunction with Ride and Stride, which is for the uh, Gloucestershire Historic Churches Trust. Now, the parish has benefited from monies from the, the uh, uh, Gloucestershire um, Historic Churches Trust. So if you're able to, first of all, go and have a good breakfast and then do a bit of walking um, uh, or even riding, um, then that's on the 9th of September. Uh, on the 17th of September, uh, there's a, a, a thing called a grave talk, uh, which is run, being run in conjunction with uh, the Methodist Church. Uh, and that's uh, in the library on uh, the 17th from 10.30 to 12 p.m. Uh, and that's just a, a safe place to talk about death, about dying, about funerals, um, uh, to, to, to talk about perhaps um, fears or um, aspirations. Uh, so that's on the 17th. If you're interested in that, you can talk to Joanne as well about that. And then on the 12th, sorry, the 5th of October, into October, we'll be talking about Christmas in a minute. Uh, on, the 5th, <laughs> on the 5th of October, um, there's um, a Pastoral Care Awareness Day here in at St. Nick's. Um, and uh, again, Joanne is going to be um, uh, leading that. And if you want to talk to her, she can she'll talk to you about that. Um, I suspect there's going to be cake, yeah. I suspect there's going to be cake, yeah. There always is. If you, if any church meeting, it's part of Leviticus, I'm sure. Uh, there's a there's a command in there that when you have a church meeting, you have to have cake. And they all all meetings start at seven thirty in the evening. Um, no, anyway. So that's um, <laughs> I digress. Sorry. Um, that's on the fifth of October. Um, and then just another headline is that. Um, the first Sunday in October is our harvest service here. Um, and again, there'll be lots more about that uh, as we go through September. And that one will be at 9.30, yes. Thank you. Let's set the alarm clocks. Set the alarm clocks. Let's set the alarm clocks. I can see a ripple of discussion now going across the congregation uh, in October. Right. Um, Helen has a, a notice for us.
before I give the notice, I think I've probably just thought of a really good song we could sing on that first Sunday. We sang it this morning, you know, the one where we're going to be singing the songs that awaken the dawn. I think that would be a good one to start with. Okay, that wasn't my notice. As I'm sure you are all aware, uh, our rector, Ian Wallace, will be retiring at the end of September and with Ruth, his wife, they will be leaving the parish here. There will be many opportunities over the next few weeks, I'm sure, for us as individuals to say goodbye and thank you to Ian and, and Ruth. But the parish is also planning a bit of a do for the last weekend in September so that we can collectively say our goodbyes. There will be two things happening that weekend and everybody is warmly invited to both of those events. On Saturday, the 28th of September at seven o'clock here at St. Nick's, there will be a formal event to which representatives from the diocese, other churches in Yate and Sodbury and the wider community will be invited. Presentations will be made there and there will be a buffet at this event. And then on Sunday, the 29th of September, after the parish communion that morning at St Mary's, there will be a more informal gathering for us all to enjoy cake <laughs> and tea or coffee in the St Mary's Youth Centre. So that's just after that service. So as I said just now, everyone is invited to one or both of these events. You can do them both if you would like to. But to help things run smoothly, I have a list here, which at the moment is blank, which we would be very glad if you could actually put your name on the list, just because that will help things run a little bit more smoothly if we've got a clearer idea of roughly how many people will be attending. So I'll have this at the back and it will be available over the next few weeks as well. Um, People who are sort of doing the catering would like to know by the 8th of September, which isn't very long, which is why we thought we'd better announce it pretty quickly. Okay, so that will be at the back of the church today and for the next few Sundays. Thank you. Uh, most important, first of all, birthdays. Anybody got birthday? Oh, a birthday. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet, not yet. <laughs> Is it this week? We've got to sing it for this week. All right, okay. All right, well, well, while we're getting some chocolate, we we'll sing choice. Don't bother the chocolate. Do you know what that means? You know, I've got to eat it. It's almost like it's been it's been blessed. Right, are we going to are we able to sing Happy Birthday? Yeah. Okay, let's uh, stand and sing our, our, our hymn. Uh, These are the days of Elijah. Sorry, somebody wants to say something. Got the dahlias back. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Jake. So, yeah. That's good. Well done. Yeah. yeah, great. You grew them. Did you grow them? He did. You did. Good. Great. Thank you. Okay. They do look rather marvelous. I'm used to some of the Philistine when it comes to flowers and things like that. Sorry. Um, my wife will tell you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's stand and sing then. These are the days of Elijah.
So what's the task for this week? What, what are we going to do this week? Well, I think we carry on keeping on. We keep on keeping on. Um, last time, uh, Howell reminded us about uh, using morning and evening prayer as a way of getting close to God. So we keep on doing that, don't we? Yeah. Um, one of my grandchildren said to me a few weeks ago, how do you eat an elephant? I said, I don't, I don't know. How do you eat an elephant? And the answer was, one forkful at a time. Um, and it's the same when we come to God and to his word. How do we get hold of God's word? How do we get it into ourselves? How do we eat it? One forkful at a time. One verse at a time. One passage at a time. So, as Howell said last week, grab hold of morning and evening prayer and uh, follow the readings and follow the prayers this week. Let's keep on keeping on, shall we? And as Norma has said, as we do that, we see how great God is, how big God is. We get to see the room growing uh, in front of us. Let's pray together, shall we? The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us, and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Oh